Ooh, green. <laughs> yeah, I did Christmas colors. <laughs> Very oh. nice. <laughs> Is it alternating red and green? <laughs> yep. <laughs> ah. Very nice. So good. Yeah, it's the small things. <laughs> so we're going to talk about releasing a package. It's the last chapter in the R Packages book. And we're going to be going over some checklist items that you should have in mind before you submit to CRAN or submit to GitHub and before you publicize your package. So the first consideration that you should have in mind is versioning. So there's about three types. The first one is an increment patch. That's when you've fixed a bug but haven't made any significant new features. You have increment minor, which is for minor releases. A minor release is something like you, you went in, you fixed a bug, you maybe added new features, and those changes happen to be what's called backward compatible. And this is the most common type of release. And then the last version type is increment major, which is for major releases. This is when the changes you've made are not backward compatible. And with that, they are likely to affect many, many users. So the point we've brought up is backward compatibility. And that, as we've seen previously, is the big difference between major and minor versions. And Hadley and, and Jenny, you know, had something to remind you that, you know, investing your time in making code backward compatible is very much an investment um, and a trade-off between your time and your user's time. And so there's a few considerations on maintaining backward compatible code. You need to keep in mind that it becomes harder to develop new features. It's harder to fix past mistakes, and it also makes it harder to read. And Hadley and Jenny had one last word of advice that, you know, you should be concerned about backward compatibility, but don't let it, you know, uh, keep you from progressing. So they have some tips for maintaining backward compatible code. First, if there's a function you'd like to remove, or even just an argument inside a function that you'd like to remove, uh, first deprecate it before removing it. And you can deprecate it using inside your function uh, deprecated or warnings to warn your user. That's good if you have one function or just a few that you're looking to deprecate and remove. But if you're deprecating a lot of code, then you should consider making yourself a function that takes care of that. Uh, a rule of thumb is if you make a change, uh, have an accompanying error message for it. If you want to use functionality in a new version of another package, don't make it a hard install time dependency in the description because forcing your users to upgrade to that package might break other code. So instead what they recommend is you check the version at runtime with the following code. And this is a, an example using ggplot2. So after that, the second consideration is um, the process by which you will submit your package. So before you submit to CRN, that's supposed to be CRAN, sorry, I'll go ahead and fix that typo, but there are a couple of things to check and fix before you do that. First, make sure that your submission comments in the CRAN comments file um, are accurate and reflect the following structure. So in that file, the first part of it should be about your test environments. 
The second part of it should be about your RCMD check results. And the third part of it should be about your downstream dependencies. And we'll go over those one by one. So first, your test environments. When checking your package, you need to make sure that it passed with the current development version of R and that it works on at least two platforms. And you can do this with R Devil. And in the book, there's links that you could click on to get this on your machine, depending on your operating system. So you might ask, you know, what should be these two platforms that I need to test it on? Well, it's good to keep in mind that you know, if you are submitting to CRAN, that CRAN runs on multiple platforms and they're Windows, Mac, Linux, and Solaris. So picking any of those two uh, would be appropriate here. The second part of your CRAN comments file is your check results. So I believe chapter 19 covered this in depth, but we're going to refresh our minds and note that there are important differences for CRAN submission. So first, you need to fix all the errors and the warnings because a package that contains those will automatically be rejected by CRAN. Eliminate as many notes as possible. And this is really a consideration for the CRAN volunteers uh, because they're busy and because every note essentially means that they have to go and read it and try to understand it. So it's good to be mindful of their time. And if you can't eliminate a note, then make sure you document that in the CRAN's comments. So the third part of your CRAN comments file is reverse dependencies. So if you're releasing a new version of an existing package, verify that the downstream dependencies still work. And you can do this with the DevTools package using RefDep check. And if you're curious what that does exactly, well, first it sets up a temporary library so it doesn't clobber any existing packages you have installed. It installs all of the dependencies of the downstream dependencies. <laughs> it runs RCMD check on each package and it summarizes the results in a single file. And if you want a template uh, that's useful for this, you can use the use this package, uh, specifically use rev depth. So, with that, we've wrapped up our discussion on the CRAN comments file. Now we're gonna talk about other important files. So of course the readme file is a very important file because essentially it answers the most important questions about your package. Who should use it? Why should we use it? And how do we use it? Your readme RMD file is a, I guess you could call it a sister file that is easily generated with the use this package using re, use readme rmd. And it creates a template and it's useful because it automatically adds it to our build ignore if you generate it through the use this package. So the advantages, other advantages, it includes a comment in the readme md to remind you to edit the rmd file not the MD file. It also automatically sets up recommended NIDR options, especially for figures that you might want to include. Um, and it also takes care of some Git related headaches for you when it comes to committing and pushing. The other important file we need to make sure is is all set up and ready to go is the newsmd file. So again, the newsmd file is aimed at existing users. So it should list all the API changes in each release. Also include a top level heading for each version, most recent at the top. And if an item is related to an issue on GitHub, 
just make sure you use the accepted style, which is to include the issue number in parentheses. So when you have all those important files uh, straightened out, then we can begin to think about the release. So when you're ready to submit to CRAN, you can use DevTools release. Um, if that's something that's been updated since, uh, that hasn't been reflected in the book yet, please let me know, but that's what the book said. Uh, if your package does not pass our, our CMD check or is in violation of CRAN policies, uh, then your package will be rejected. And it's good to keep in mind, and Hadley and, and Jenny talked about this, that failures are inherently frustrating. And the feedback, you know, might not be the nicest or the politest. So, you know, just don't take it personally and uh, arguing might not be the best use of time. Instead, uh, please do try and fix the identified problems, make the recommended changes. Uh, you can rerun uh, DevTools check just to make sure everything is good to go. Uh, also add a resubmission section at the top of your CRAN comments file. And of course, when you're ready, uh, you can resubmit with DevTools. So the last consideration and the most exciting part is of course, publicizing your package so that many people can find out about it and use it. So good avenues to use to do that is the RStudio blog. You have Twitter, if you use the RStats hashtag, um, there's a mailing list and um, the R for DS Slack. And today we'll talk about package down. Uh, because I believe it's it's an important part of publicizing your package because it creates this one-stop shop for new users and also old users um, to get acquainted with everything that your package has to offer or get reacquainted with it. So this is a screenshot of the base plot package down homepage. And uh, you can see that it is organized in a manner with a sidebar, so you can uh, consult uh, different uh, pages to, for different purposes. So that's neat. So package down is a package, so we'll have to download it. And there are a couple handy helper functions with the use this package as well as inside the package. And so again, what package down does is it creates a website for your package and uh, it allows for many customizations that you can make to the metadata, the homepage, the references, the articles and the news page. So last night I created a tiny little package Silly, it's named after my cat. It has one function, and that one function um, helps you guess and test if uh, the nickname is actually one of Buddy's nicknames, and Buddy is the name of my cat. So <laughs> here it is. Uh, let me go on the GitHub page, actually. So I've already done a lot of the, the workflow with creating a package. As you can see, it has readme files, a license, a description. Um, it has then one, one function. So what we're gonna do together is create a package down page for it. So this is my first time live coding, so hopefully everything goes well. Uh, and I'll follow the steps in my slides. So first we need to install. Package down. 
while that's loading, I'm going to check out the chat. <laughs> Buddy BMI calculator. Yeah, that should definitely be the next one. <laughs> All right, so it looks like package down was successfully loaded. The next step is we're gonna run this just once. So it helps configure your package to use package down. Okay, so we can see here uh, that it added a YAML page, it added docs, um, great. The next step is to run this to build the website. Awesome, there it is. Uh, so as you can see with very minimal work, you can get uh, just a simple page created for your package. And it was uh, smart enough to basically import my readme file and put it as the home file we have automatically generated a reference page, which corresponds to the function, the only function that's in the package. Uh, we have our licenses added, developers, and our code of conduct. So pretty neat. And of course we can keep customizing this uh, using well, just thinking about all the components that we could customize. So first, starting with the metadata. So you can override certain defaults. For example, you can put in the theme that you'd want. You can put in a Google Analytics tag to keep track of, you know, who's using where, who's using your website, how many people are using it. You can also add social media icons, so your Twitter or your GitHub. And you can also add a search bar at the top. Uh, let's say your package is very big and people need to navigate through different things. So in order to find out more and see exactly how to override some of these defaults um, or add these things, um, the package down website has everything you need to do that. The other thing that you can customize is of course the homepage. Uh, as we've seen as a default, it sort of pulls from the index or the readme file. And here's a little tidbit in case you're wondering, package down does try them in order to see which one to pull from. And if that's something, if, if you prefer a certain file to be the one that's pulled into package down, uh, make sure you go to this page and see how that can be done. The other thing you can customize is this reference page, which again has all the functions of your package. You can also add articles. So package down as a default automatically takes from the vignettes but you can also override that or customize it further. Uh, the news is another thing that can be added to your package down website. Um, and if news MD is present in your package, then it will automatically be rendered by package down. So what we've done is sort of build a website, but it's local for now. It's not really available on the internet. 
uh, if you want to make it so, you have two options. You either go to the GitHub docs directory support, and there's instructions, in-depth instructions here on how to set that up. Or you can try and uh, do that through the use this package. So I've never done this first option, although the book says this is probably the easiest, or sorry, I should say the package down folks say this is the easiest. But today I'm gonna try this and see if it works out for me. Hopefully it does. Okay. So I think now what needs to happen is for me to push all of this up onto my GitHub, right? I'll try doing that and see if it works. So I'm gonna infuriate Tan a little bit because um, I'm still just a little girl using my handy dandy click. Use the UI, it's what it's there for. <laughs> This is just very comforting to me. I get to choose what I put up there, what I don't put up there. For example, this DS store, which I should have put into my Git Ignore somewhere, but I will not bother with it right now. Um, so my thing is just to click everything, commit and push and pray really. And if it doesn't work, then I just burn it all down and I reclone and see what happens. <laughs> all right, so let me commit this. I think I've clicked everything that I needed to click. All right, adding package down. That looks good. Push. Okay. Get back to the internet. Um, now, I do not remember what to do from here. I think. Go to settings. Yeah. And then, yeah, click the source button there, like the drop down there. Master, right? Uh, I think your your package is still the uh, it's the the branch is still building, um, and it'll create a GH Pages branch for you. Gotcha. So maybe you check on that first. You can watch it yeah. build. Looks like it's finished. Uh, 
I should select docs, right? Uh, it should build. So what you can do now is just look at your GH pages branch. So like go to your, go to your like main page there and then check out the GH, well not check out, but like look at the GH pages branch. Okay, so yeah, so it's all just in your main index. So it's, it's all in your main folder there. So you just wanna do it from the root. Uh, so your site is ready to be published. So let's click on that. Oh, that did not work. It's ready to be published, but it didn't say it has actually published. Yeah. Um, so what I need to do. Uh, refresh that page first. Okay. There it is. Awesome. Um. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> uh, Let me try changing it to dog. Just to see. It worked on the second try, so I don't know why it didn't the first time around, or maybe I just needed to be patient a little bit and just wait a minute, but here it is. <laughs> awesome. Hey. <Yay. laughs> so behind the scenes, it's actually running like a GitHub action to build, build the site again. So like you run a package down to run all the R code and turn your package into HTML. And then GitHub runs a, like a Jekyll site, basically, that turns your HTML into like and puts it on the web. So it does take like a couple, like a minute or two before it like properly updates, I think. Sounds good. Thank you. And Netlify will do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's all I had for you today. Um, thank you for coming and yeah. Please let me know if you have any questions.